In the remote highlands of Scotland, there nestled a quaint, isolated village called Cairnbray. Legends and folklore swirled around this hamlet like mist, weaving tales of a long-forgotten curse that bound it to a horrifying secret. The villagers, steeped in their traditions, held onto these stories with reverence, passing them down from generation to generation. Among the villagers, young Ewan was a curious and adventurous soul. Despite the warnings of his elders, he harbored a burning desire to uncover the truth behind the tales. One fateful evening, under the Shroud of Darkness, Ewan and his loyal companion, a black cat named Midnight, ventured into the forbidden woods that bordered Cairnbray. Darkness enveloped them as they pressed deeper into the ancient forest. The trees stretched their gnarled branches towards the sky like grasping claws, casting eerie shadows that danced and swayed with the wind. Suddenly, a bone-chilling howl pierced the silence, sending shivers down Ewan's spine. Gripped by fear, Ewan tried to retrace his steps, but the path seemed to vanish into an inky abyss. He was trapped, alone in the sinister embrace of the cursed woods. Desperation gnawed at his mind as he desperately searched for a way out. Then, out of the swirling mist, emerged a figure. Tall and skeletal, its skin as pale as moonlight, the figure glided towards Ewan with unhurried grace. Its eyes burned with an unnatural fire, piercing the darkness like beacons of doom. Terror seized Ewan as he recognized the creature. It was the specter of the White Witch, an evil entity that haunted the legends of Cairnbray. Whispers of her malevolence had chilled the villagers' blood for centuries. The White Witch extended a skeletal hand towards Ewan, her long, sharp fingernails glinting in the moonlight. Ewan recoiled in horror, but he was frozen in place, unable to move. A sense of hopelessness washed over him as the witch's icy touch grazed his skin. At that moment, Midnight, who had been watching from the shadows, sprang into action. With a ferocious hiss, the black cat arched its back and launched itself at the witch. The creature let out a piercing shriek as Midnight's claws tore at her spectral form. The battle between Midnight and the White Witch was a terrifying spectacle. Darkness churned and swirled around them, the air thick with malevolence. Ewan watched in disbelief as his loyal companion fought for his life against the malevolent spirit. Finally, with a desperate lunge, Midnight sank its teeth into the witch's spectral flesh. A blood-curdling scream echoed through the woods as the witch recoiled in pain. Her form flickered and wavered, then vanished into thin air, leaving behind a lingering sense of dread. As the darkness receded, Ewan was left alone in the eerie silence of the woods. He stumbled back to Cairnbray, his mind reeling from the horrors he had witnessed. From that day forward, Ewan carried the burden of his experience, forever haunted by the encounter with the White Witch and the terrifying secret that lurked within the cursed woods. The villagers, upon hearing Ewan's tale, were both horrified and grateful. They had been living in fear of the curse for generations, but now they knew the truth. The White Witch was real, and she had been defeated by the bravery of a young boy and his loyal companion. The story of Ewan and Midnight became a legend in Cairnbray, passed down from generation to generation. It served as a warning to those who dared to venture into the Forbidden Woods, and a reminder that even in the darkest of times, courage and loyalty could triumph over evil. Story number 2. In the forgotten depths of the Appalachian Mountains, nestled a dilapidated old mansion known as Blackwood Manor. Legends whispered of its sinister past, of a wealthy family torn apart by madness and violence. The locals avoided the place like the plague, their hearts gripped by fear. One stormy night, a group of thrill-seeking friends, eager to defy local superstition, decided to explore the abandoned mansion. They were a motley crew, Emily, the fearless leader, Ben, the skeptic, Sarah, the timid one, and Alex, the daredevil. As they approached Blackwood Manor, the air grew heavy with an oppressive sense of dread. The wind howled through the trees, and the rain beat against the crumbling walls of the mansion. Undeterred, they pushed open the creaking iron gates and stepped inside. The interior of the mansion was a labyrinth of dust-covered rooms and winding staircases. The friends cautiously made their way through the darkness, their flashlights casting eerie shadows on the walls. Suddenly, they heard a faint whisper, carried on the wind. Help us, it whispered. Please help us. The friends froze, their hearts pounding in their chests. 
the whisper seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. They exchanged nervous glances, uncertainty gnawing at their minds. As they continued their exploration, they stumbled upon a hidden room. The door was slightly ajar, revealing a scene of unspeakable horror. Blood-stained walls, shattered furniture, and the skeletal remains of what appeared to be a family lay scattered across the room. Terror gripped the friends as they realized the true nature of Blackwood Manor. This was no ordinary haunted house. It was a place where something truly evil had taken place. Desperate to escape, they turned to leave, but the door slammed shut behind them. They were trapped. The whispers grew louder, more insistent. They seemed to be coming from the skeletal remains, pleading for release. The friends huddled together, their eyes wide with fear. Then, they heard footsteps. Slow, deliberate footsteps echoing through the mansion. Something was coming for them. They frantically searched for another way out, but every door and window was sealed shut. They were trapped, at the mercy of whatever lurked in the darkness. As the footsteps drew closer, the friends could feel their sanity slipping away. They were surrounded by darkness, by whispers, by the creeping sensation that they were not alone. Finally, the door to the hidden room burst open. A figure stood in the doorway, shrouded in darkness. Its eyes glowed with an unnatural light, and its twisted smile revealed rows of razor-sharp teeth. The friends screamed in terror as the figure lunged at them. They fought back desperately, but their efforts were futile. One by one, they were dragged into the darkness, their screams swallowed by the ancient walls of Blackwood Manor. The mansion remained silent, its dark secrets hidden once again. But the whispers never truly faded away. They lingered in the wind, carried on the echoes of the friends' final moments of terror. Story 3. In the quaint town of Eldridge Hollow, there was a legend that whispered through the streets, a legend of the old graveyard that lay beyond the weeping willows at the town's edge. They said it was a place where the veil between the living and the dead was perilously thin, where spirits lingered, tethered by unspeakable secrets and undying remorse. The graveyard was ancient, its origins lost to time, with tombstones so eroded they seemed to merge with the earth itself. At night, a thick mist would rise from the ground, slithering like spectral fingers between the graves. Mara, a young and daring journalist, had arrived in Eldridge Hollow, drawn by tales of the graveyard's eerie phenomena. Her mission was to spend a night there, documenting her experience for an article that she believed would ignite her career. As dusk settled on the town, Mara made her way to the graveyard. The air grew colder with each step she took towards the wrought iron gates that groaned in protest as she pushed them open. She felt a shiver trail down her spine, not from the chill, but from a sense of foreboding that seemed to hang in the air like an unseen specter. Equipped with a camera, a notebook, and a flashlight, Mara ventured deeper into the graveyard. The mist was rising now, swirling around her feet, making her surroundings appear ethereal and otherworldly. She could barely see the path in front of her, but she pressed on, determined to uncover the secrets of this haunted place. As midnight approached, a deep silence enveloped the graveyard, a silence so profound it felt like a weight pressing against her eardrums. Mara's flashlight flickered, casting eerie shadows that danced across the ancient tombstones. She felt a growing sense of unease, a feeling that she was not alone. Suddenly, she heard a soft whisper, a voice so faint it was almost lost in the wind. Leave this place, it murmured, sending a jolt of fear through her. Mara spun around, her heart pounding, but there was no one there. Only the mist and the silent watchers, the gravestones. Unnerved but resolute, Mara continued her exploration. She came across a grave unlike any other, a black tombstone with an inscription that read, Here lies Jonathan Eldridge, cursed be his name. A chill ran through her as she read the name Eldridge, the founder of the town. As she pondered the significance of this grave, the ground beneath her trembled. The air grew colder, and the mist thickened, obscuring her vision. A low, guttural growl echoed through the graveyard, a sound so menacing it froze her in place. Out of the fog, a shadowy figure emerged, its form shifting and undulating as if not bound by the laws of nature. Mara's breath caught in her throat. Her mind screamed for her to run, but her body refused to move. The figure drew closer, its features becoming clearer. 
it was a man, or what used to be a man. His face twisted in a grotesque expression of rage and sorrow. His eyes, dark voids, bore into hers, and he pointed a bony finger at her. You do not belong here, he hissed, his voice like the scraping of stone against stone. Mara stumbled backward, her mind racing. Was this Jonathan Eldridge? Was he the source of the graveyard's haunting? She had to know more, but the terror that gripped her heart urged her to flee. As she turned to run, the ground beneath her gave way, and she fell into a dark abyss that opened up beneath her feet. She plummeted into the darkness, her screams echoing in the hollow void. She landed hard on a cold, damp surface. Dazed and in pain, she tried to gather her senses. She was in a narrow tunnel, the walls made of earth and stone. The air was stale and heavy with the scent of decay. Mara realized with a sinking feeling that she had fallen into one of the old burial vaults that lay beneath the graveyard. Panic set in as she thought of being trapped underground, forgotten and alone. She fumbled for her flashlight, which had fallen during her descent. When she finally found it and turned it on, the beam of light revealed a sight that made her blood run cold. Bones, hundreds of them, were scattered across the floor of the vault, remnants of the dead who had been laid to rest here long ago. But there was something else, something far more horrifying. Among the bones, partially hidden in the shadows, was a figure, hunched and still. It was clothed in tattered garments, and its head was bowed as if in prayer. Mara's heart pounded in her chest as she realized the figure was not a part of, 